Hey there, Demi here. Welcome to our Ask Me Anything session. Number three, third so far, ever since I created the page. So hello, good evening everyone. We are going to have a lot of questions answered today. Um, we're going to a lot, five, no, 60 minutes to answer all your questions. But um, I'm not I'm not going to be answering a lot of basic questions today, like for example, like how to start freelancing, or how, <laughs> how. <laughs> so a lot of people are like commenting how, or how to start freelancing. Um, I already announced that yesterday that we are um, going to be answering more deeper questions this time rather than the basic one so that we can have a lot of questions answered. Uh, the basic questions like how to start freelancing or where can I get clients or things like these are actually already answered in www.createandriseacademy.com forward slash FAQs. So uh, you can just go there and um, have a look at the questions that are already answered. So I'm not only answering FAQs there but I also uh, I'm also answering questions about Create and Rise Academy so that's an entire page of information for you to dive into but this time I will be answering questions about freelancing that are not common so like portfolio building and stuff like that so if you already have a question right now in your head um, start typing in that question and then I'll be answering it first Okay, so before that, I would like to um, share to you something really, really amazing. Uh, this, this has happened, what, yesterday, I think. It was yesterday when I received this news. Actually, we received the news the day before yesterday, but I read my emails very late. So one of our mentees, uh, one of our mentees just had a really amazing success and I want the world to know about it because people have always been skeptical about freelancing, that you only have very few hours in a day to even earn that much or, you know, a lot of questions about freelancing and even my very own limiting beliefs have been broken down by this very testimony. So... Are you ready for this? <laughs> it's insane that this mentee has shattered glass ceilings. Like I cannot even imagine how this was possible. I really thought that when you are freelancing, for you to reach this amount of money, you have to have like a lot of people working together in one project, right? But super amazing to know that she's the only one. She's an independent contractor or a freelancer a contractor and freelancer is the same and she was able to hit ding 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 she was able to hit 575,000 pesos so if you're going to look at this in your screen right now um, she the client was haggling her rate for 550,000 pesos so you can see on the left side you have here 550k and then on the right side, she then mentioned what the project was. And it's a web design, branding, and social media kit. And um, it's, this is for a local client. So this one is 575. So the client haggled her at 550K. And then later on, she was able to get it at 575. So that is super amazing and I cannot even believe because to be honest with you, I have not had that kind of success when I was freelancing. I still am freelancing on the side a little bit, uh, but I haven't had that kind of success ever since. So that's super amazing that one of my students are doing that kind of thing, like literally breaking glass ceilings as in I have not thought about a client a local client this is a client in the philippines paying her 575 and it's like what like a local client being able to afford you that much so it's insane i used to think that a lot of local businesses here in the philippines don't really value us freelancers you know like we just 
advertise things. We just work online. <laughs> so I don't think Philippines has really come to a point where they understand what freelancing is or they understand the value of experts and independent contractors to really help them with their goals, right? So it's super amazing to know that we actually have that kind of um, testimony. So not only did it shatter the mentee's limiting beliefs, but it also shattered my very own. So yeah, it's insane. <laughs> I literally told her when she messaged me, she said, Gorl. Nahirapan ako huminga kakabasa ng message mo because it's ins it's just insane how there's like 575 guys like <laughs> so that's amazing okay alrighty there so again if you have questions and clarifications I'm going to um, just type it in the comment section while I'm going to do a little bit of briefing just so the the people who are going to jump here with us would have a little bit of clarity on what freelancing really is and how it looks like you know so if you already know this then you're going to think i'm a broken record but at least for the people who are new here in the page and has just started watching with us and you would understand what i really do what we do as a community and what we are fighting for as a fighting force so let's start with what freelancing really is so freelancing is going out there as a self-employed person in whatever digital skill you are comfortable with and offering. So di ba, memorize na memorize. Ilang beses ko na yun. Ilang beses ko nang sinabi yan sa lahat ng videos ko. So I am very, very trained and very, you know ba, parang ano na, parang inauthentic na siya, pakinggan, kasi nga, memorize ko na. But anyway, um, you, you go out there as a self-employed person offering any type of digital skill you're comfortable with. So you probably are thinking like, Demi, you're in graphic design. Does that mean I need to be a designer too? Or does that mean that I need to be an artsy person or a creative person to become a freelancer? No, that's not the case. Um, you can actually go out there as a freelancer regardless of what type of skill you're in. There are just some high, the, what we call highly in-demand skills like website design, graphic design, copywriting, digital marketing, paid advertising, um, graph, yeah, graphic design, I just said that. So there are some social media management also. So there are really some skills that are highly in demand, but regardless whatever your skill is, even though it's not really like super insanely highly in demand, if you just understand how to market that skill, then you can definitely make money out from freelancing. So what I teach is, I am pushing people towards a goal of reaching 100k every month and we are not really relying on freelancing sites. So if you're coming here right now in the live video saying like what freelancing sites are we going to sign up for to me? We are not an advocate of that. Although we have I do have mentees who are still in some of the freelancing sites, but I am encouraging them to pull their profiles and clients out from those freelancing sites so that those freelancing sites cannot make money out from them and their their what do you call that their lifeline basically will not depend on those freelancing sites because what ano mangyayari kung for example your Upwork profile has been disapproved or suspended or things like that then that means you don't have any career you don't have any business right so that's why we do not encourage people to go to freelancing websites like this what i teach however is we go to social media platforms and not really spam and promote ourselves but we help people we build genuine relationships we build a brand through social media sites and that's what i teach inside the create and rise academy speaking of create and rise academy we are opening batch echo on april 1 to 4 2020 so we are opening the enrollment again in our community where we are teaching people it's not only me actually so the platform in itself you're going to see a lot of videos about me talk about me a lot of videos of me talking about marketing and how you can build a brand and things like that but in the community in itself it's not just me that are teaching we have a lot of mentees that are already experienced and can share their right own opinions and experiences to you if you are a newbie so I cannot really say that it's just me. So we have a community of people who is very much willing to be your backbone when you need help as a free freelancer, which I didn't have back in the day, by the way, highway. 
<laughs> so there's that. So that's what we do. Um, as a community, we really advocate on high paying freelance careers. There are a lot of people out there that are earning like millions of dollars but are still not paying their virtual assistants and Filipino freelancers the right amount of money that they should deserve. Because we all know very, very well that Filipinos are hardworking people. We are very loyal to whoever we are serving. And I don't really think that we are getting the paid that we, the pay rather, that we deserve. And that's what we are fighting for, okay? We're not in the mainstream two to three dollars per hour. I push my mentees to ask ten dollars per hour up, regardless if you're a newbie or an experienced person. So that's what we do. We advocate for high paying freelance careers and we don't recommend or we we don't really I don't recommend, let's just say it's me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really recommend freelancing sites to other people because I want them to push forward and really build a band for themselves and build their very own businesses because that's, that's what's the cost of freedom. Like you have to go out there and become a business person. Be responsible for your own life. Be responsible for your very own business. So that's what we do. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, so we now have a lot of questions and going to start answering them now. We have here very first question from Sherry Laurel Redondo. Hi, Miss Demi. I'm starting to build my own portfolio as a social media manager. Nubi lang po kasi ako mas okay po ba gumawa ako ng sarili kong website? But the problem is wala pa akong budget for making my own website. Hi, Sherry. Uh, Maalaala mo kaya? <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Um, so, Sherry, to me, I think that building a portfolio is not really a requirement. Even my mentees, I don't require them to build a website portfolio right away. What I do require them to do is collect samples of their work and collect testimonials. So it's not really necessary for you to put up a website portfolio right away, even though that's what I did because I did not know what I was doing. But to me, it's very important that you just have testimonials and samples of your work. You don't really need a portfolio right away. You can definitely build one right on on the, the road to like on the road while you are doing your freelancing stuff. But I don't think to start, you need a portfolio because a lot of people are stuck in that part where they're like, oh my god, I don't have a portfolio that I can't promote myself to my clients or I can't market myself just because I don't have a portfolio. That's a limiting belief, okay? A lot of people are stuck in that part and I don't want you to get stuck on it because I was stuck on it for a while. So let me just tell you, <laughs> it's not important really to have a portfolio right away, okay? All right, so next one... Mm -hmm. I'm just going for the questions now, huh? Like, if you're saying hi, hello, I acknowledge you, I read your comments, <laughs> but we're just going for the questions right now so that we can answer more questions, as, a lot of questions as possible. Jade Kim is asking, do we need to know how to use AI, or this is Adobe Illustrator, or Photoshop to be successful in freelancing. Um, like what I said earlier, uh, Jade, we don't really, it's not necessary for you to have Illustrator or to have Photoshop or to become a creative or to become a graphic designer to become successful in freelancing. There are so many ways on how you can become successful in freelancing. What's most important to me, since I am an advocate of really creating the life that you want to live or really like not only, not simply focusing on the money part of things, but also focusing on how you can serve your clients better. I am pro um, following your passions and your dreams. So for example, you are very passionate in writing. I always suggest my mentees to like, oh, why don't you go ghost writing? Why don't you go freelance blogging? Why don't you go um, freelance content writing? So I suggest to them the things that I think would match very well to the things that they are passionate about. So if you do not know yet what you are passionate about, it's completely fine, right? If if you have no idea what you're passionate about or if you're multi-passionate, go with that one thing 
that you enjoy learning or you enjoy doing the most. So it's not really a requirement for you to become a graphic design or Adobe Photoshop or like all these things. It's another limiting belief. You can definitely proceed with freelancing regardless what skill you're in. The most important part, I'll say this over again and again, the most important part in freelancing is knowing how to market yourself because internet is a very, very noisy world and if you do not know how to stand out in the crowd, you are going to lose in the game. So. The most important part is not even the skill. The most important part is my kidding. Okay. Ding 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 ding. ding. Uh, okay, Fem is asking, I am troubled to think between paying the enrollment fee and losing my budget due to a temporary close of my job. What is the most wisely advice I can hear from you? So Fem, I already answered this email. Um, you messaged me also in the Facebook page and in the email and I already answered it, but just so we, um, excuse me, what did I burp? Sorry, ha. Huh? <laughs> well, just to answer this, because I know a lot of people are also wondering about this. Uh, I think it's very important for you to also know regardless. So do, we do have people who are messaging us like, I really want to enroll, but I'm not sure because we're, we don't really know what's going to happen with the pandemic that's happening. Uh, what, what's, what the future holds basically so should I just really keep my money save it as a budget or do I need to enroll so here's my take on it and I'm not super biased about these things though but I really think that at this time we freelancers just revalidated our value or our what do you call this our position in our industry Imagine, even though it's not a pandemic, like we can, we have every right and every freedom to just stay at home and be safe, regardless what is happening in the world. And I think that as a person, you should also have that freedom, except that your employment job will not allow you to do that. So for me, the freelance industry is just going to grow. And especially in these times, like we really revalidated our our industry. Like the freelance industry has really revalidated ourselves, and we have often been declared as the future of work. And I think I cannot tell for sure what your budget is or what your capability is financially. And I'm definitely not the type of person who you should ask about, you know, like what you should spend your money on. But I think Personally, if I'm talking, if, if I did not own the academy and someone else was and I am to hold a 4K in my pocket and I wasn't sure what to do, I would definitely still enroll without any bias here. Like I'm putting the biasness out of the road. Like I don't really care if you enroll or not, to be honest with you. But I think as a person, as a wise person, I would really use that 4K as an investment. And it's going to come back to you. I swear to God, I can assure you that it's going to come back to you if you just follow the things that you learn in the academy. A lot of people can attest to that. My mentees can definitely tell you like, yeah, I made my money back in like three days, in five days. But I cannot assure that it's going to be the same for you. Okay, you get what I mean? I'm sure you're going to get your money back, but I cannot assure you when. Okay, because that depends on the person. It depends on a person's ability to apply the things that he or she learned in the academy. It also depends on the person's ability to really push forward regardless if you're feeling down and broken and intimidated or things like that. So it depends on the person, but I can definitely assure you if you just follow the things and push through whatever the circumstance is, if you're going to enroll in the academy, you are definitely going to make your money back. Plus, you're going to make more because not only is that going to be a one-time thing, you're going to have that specific knowledge for the rest of your life. So even if you decide to not become a freelance person anymore and you decided to pursue a different type of business, then you can apply those business principles to your new business. So it's definitely an investment. So whatever it is, fem that you're going to decide on or whatever it is that your, um, what do you call this, your answer going to be, I leave that up to you. But if, like what I said, I'm not biased about this answer. Like if you're going to enroll, sure, I'm going to teach you whatever I can. I'm going to guide you every step of the way. But if you're not, it's completely fine. 
right? So this, this decision is up to you, but as for me, uh, the way I see it is going to be a really good investment. Okay? Alrighty. There we have it. Mika is asking, any tips on how I market myself? Um, this one, Mika, is a very vague question. So, meron tayong um, monthly Q&A inside the group as well. So, we can... Mika is a mentee, by the way. So, just putting it out there. We have a monthly Q&A session inside the group. So, exclusive for just mentees. So, we're going to talk about the modules and things like that. Um, you can definitely reach out to me if you have questions. Okay, alrighty. Jade is asking, how much is the enrollment fee? The enrollment fee that's going to be up on April 1 to 4 is 5K po. So 5,000 pesos, that is the enrollment fee. You're going to only pay once. And, oh my God, I can't believe I'm breaking this here. Um, we decided, dang, 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 dang. So my team and I have decided to keep the Create and Rise Academy lifetime access forever. Ding, 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 ding. Yay! <laughs> so we decided for the we decided that uh, we're going to keep the academy a lifetime access forever. So Instead of it being a one-year access, we decided to keep it lifetime for everyone who's going to enroll. So there's that. But here's the catch. We are not going to be opening Crate and Rise Academy again until September. So we're opening it April 1 to 4. The next time we're going to open it is not until September. So if you wish to enroll, maybe you should already and not leave your dreams off the table. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yan is asking, look, where did the thing go? Okay, never mind. Yan is asking, where do you get clients to market your service? So I get them on Facebook groups. I get them on LinkedIn groups. I get them on, I got one, that's funny. I got one from just my website. I got a couple from my Facebook page. So it's like everywhere. I have multiple stream or multiple, um, what do you call this? Multiple media. Not, that's not the right grammar, is it? Media is plural. So you can't say multiple. I don't know. But I, <laughs> but I get it from different platforms, social media platforms, okay? So a lot of them are in social media. Lang, okay. All right. We also have a question from Niza Clarine. Why do you consider yourself as a freelancer and not a solopreneur? So, this is tough. <laughs> I think freelancing in itself is a business. And regardless what your label is, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because the, the advocacy really of freelancing and entrepreneurship is really serving others and being there, helping them to solve their problems. So I might be a solopreneur, I might be a funpreneur, entrepreneur, freelancer, whatever. They're all just labels. And at the end of the day, it's what my value that matters. So I'm here for freedom and I'm here to have my very own freedom and I'm here to be of service to the people who need my help. And that's what important. That's what is. That's what is important at the end of the day. <laughs> Napakaheroic, oh, de ba? Yon. Okay. Keisha is asking: Is it possible to close deals without a portfolio? Yes. If yes, what are creative strategies worth trying instead? So you build a brand. You find where your client is hanging out. So. Of course, first, you're going to have to identify who you want to serve. So if you're a creative person, then who do you want to serve? Do you want to serve authors? Do you want to serve entrepreneurs? Do you want to serve Australian authors only? Do you want to serve entrepreneurs in the U.S. only? Do you want to serve local businesses here in the Philippines? So it's up to you who you want to serve, and you find where they're hanging out. So for example, your local, uh, you want to serve local clients, like here in the Philippines. Of course, you're going to have to go around your area and ask them if they want to work with you. If your ideal client is a online entrepreneur, then usually they have like Facebook pages, they're on Facebook groups, 
of that specific community and so you can reach out to them if they want your service or not you know stuff like that and then after that of course you also have the ability to show off what you got so you either build a Facebook page you either build a social media platform things of that sort so it's a long process that is tedious but everything is all going to be worth it okay there Corrine uh -huh. is asking what groups do you usually get your clients and she's a mentee so Corrine we have a list of Facebook groups inside the Academy those are the most recommended groups Facebook groups that I recommend so you can just check that out okay Mika is asking, will you add more skills to the academy? Yes. So my very first goal really is to refine module one, right? And add module seven. And then I'll be adding more skills in the academy. All righty. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to uh, skip the people that don't have questions now, so so that we can answer more questions. How to start, please, if you're asking like how to start as a freelancer, um, you would definitely want to check out createnorescademy.com forward slash FAQs or you can go to the pin post on the Facebook page we have there like the very first post that you see where there are pictures of me and the mentees there's like a full load of instructions there that you can follow so that you would have your um, time to shine <laughs> you would have it okay mm -hmm. Okay, we have a question here from Lizelle. I am a college student and just want to ask, can I have a job by simply joining your group, assistant, for example, in your organization? Okay, so Lizelle, I am not hiring. I'm not really the type of person who likes to hire a lot of people. So right now I only have a customer service and a graphic designer and a Facebook ads manager and that's about it. Like that's what all I need. And what I really teach is for others to market themselves and I barely have hirings. Like I, I'm not the type of person that likes to hire a lot of people. So if I can have my business working with only three people, I would do it. <laughs> There's that. Rochelle is asking, what application are you using for graphic design? I'm using a lot of things. I'm using Cro Procreate. Procreate for iPad, Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, like a lot of Adobe products that I'm using. Okay. Kylie Kim is asking how to enroll and be part of your academy. So Kim, you're going to have to pay 5K enrollment fee on April 1 to 4 when we open. So our um, the Create Ross Academy is going to open on April 1 to 4 and we are going to... Um, allow people in that time only uh, and the next one will be on September like what I said and yeah so that's all you had to do and then you will get access to all the videos and marketing techniques and tools that you need to have as a freelancer again this is not a job we treat freelancing as a business so if you're looking for a job I'm sorry but we cannot provide you that we really are just simply teaching people how to become business owners and to become serve online based service providers there <laughs> okay mm. okay Charmaine is asking I followed your advice by getting clients on FE groups, getting clients, but my clients are mostly self-publishing authors say, say they don't really pay much. Should I change my niche? 
book cover designer into a different one where clients pay more or maybe I just need to look more for those high paying self-publishing author clients. Okay. So this was also my dilemma. Uh, before I became a sales funnel designer, I was also serving authors and a lot of them really don't really have the ability to like spend a lot on uh, book covers. But to tell you honestly, I have a friend whose name is Christian Bentula and who's also doing um, book covers for authors. So I think that you, in my case, I gave up too early. So I changed my niche. Okay, so this is what happened to me. I was a book cover designer back in the day and the same thing happened to me. I realized that there are a lot of them are self-published authors and I don't really pay much and then I gave up right away so I changed my niche. Only to find out that there's this guy whose name's Christian Bentulan who is earning a ton on self-publishing authors but he's also really, really good at what he does. So I think, in my opinion, it should only be a matter of skill so if you can really develop your skill to a point where it's like you're making like super amazing book covers that people wouldn't have to question why you're charging that much because that's the reason self-publishing authors, they really need a lot of convincing because again, their business is bootstrapped. That means they only have the amount of budget for this, this type of thing. But I'm pretty sure they can extend it. They can extend their budget a little bit as long as they see that you are definitely worth um, that much. So that's what I think. But again, not a lot of, not all niches are like that, okay? <laughs> so not all niches are actually like that. It's just that people who are in a tight budget, like for example, startups, startups would not pay a lot for like, freelance services like this but if you are really good at what they do then they can stretch it a little bit you know what I mean so like if people are like of a short budget there are markets and niches that are like that they would definitely want to see like they would definitely want to see you to prove yourself why you are worth that much okay so there's that if you really want if you want to stay in that niche for example you really love designing book covers as in like you are so passionate about it, keep it. But if you are already frustrated, like, oh my God, I don't love my gem anymore. I don't like designing book covers anymore. So you might want to change your niche. And there's nothing wrong with changing niche. I've changed niche like three times, four times already. There's nothing wrong with it. So yeah, but if you really are passionate about like creating book covers, maybe you should stay and then just upscale, right? So you have two options right there. Okie dokie. So Isri <laughs> Isri is one of my mentee. Ang taas ng comment ni Isri eh. Bakit hindi siya ma-view? Hindi ka ma-view? Ayun. Naka-zoom in siya. <laughs> So, dahil sa COVID-19, tumum tumumal yung clients ko. I'm just updating my portfolio and testing SMM. Tapos, pag alam ko, kailangan ko na ng marketing. Fair and tama. Mamaya ako na test, pero not less than... Yung package na yun would benefit her brand. Sige. E, I think that there are really instances like this that tutumal talaga yung client. Especially if you're doing local clients. So, yeah. But, uh, I think you should start already foreign clients, Isari. <laughs> so you need you you should start going out there and looking for foreign clients. You know, so try mo yan. Um, just don't don't fit. What do you call this? Nihirapan ako magtagalog. Just don't crumple yourself in a very tight community. So try stretching it out a little bit. There are so many things that you could do for your marketing that would help you find or would help you gain more money. So it's either you can change your niche, you can change your targeting, ideal clients, you can change your ideal clients if you want, just like what I mentioned in the previous question. There are so many things you can do. You can add more offers to your packages, like add more freebies on the top of it to make it more valuable and then you can raise the price a little bit. There's so many things. I'm discussing this on, let me see, negotiation. So try checking module five negotiation where I'm talking about this, like stacking your offers and making it even more valuable. That's a really good marketing strategy. There. 
April is asking, Hi, Ms. Demi. Question, paano po ako makaka-join? I'm from Negros, Negros Oriental. So, April, all the videos are uh, pre-recorded. So, you don't need to worry about anything. Uh, if you're, we have mentees from like Batanes, Negros, or Davao, like everywhere around the Philippines. We even have mentees from Saudi, from Dubai, from Bangladesh. <laughs> so it's completely fine. Wherever you are in the world, it's completely fine because the videos are pre recorded and you just really need the access to the academy to view it all. So there's that. Okay. So Ken is asking Is there any freelance job? Again, this is not a job, this is a business. Uh, <laughs> galit. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, just make sure you consider freelancing as a business because if you consider it a job, it's not going to be the same. Okay? So if you want to really have a lucrative freelancing business, don't consider freelancing business as a job. Consider it as a business because it really is a business. You have to start everything from scratch, pricing, whatever it is. So consider it as a, as a business. Okay? All right, there. Um, is there any freelance career that we students could do using our phone? There are so many things that you could do in freelancing if you just use your phones. It's not going to be very convenient. I say this again and again and again to a lot of people just to let you know expectations versus reality. So, so it's not really convenient. To be honest with you, if you're using your phone, regardless if it's an iPhone or an Android, it's not really convenient for you to use your phone because it's not really a screen. But there are like 70-80% of the softwares or the websites that you see right now on the internet have apps, have counterpart apps that you can download in the store. So it's definitely possible. You can do social media management, you can do graphic design even, you can do canva.com on your phone. Like you can design graphics on your phone. You can, some people even like do video editing on their phone to upload to YouTube and earn a lot of likes. So they don't even earn money a lot and they don't even earn money from it. So there's that. It's just para para lang yan. <laughs> okay. Um, Roe is asking, Hi, Ms. Demi, I just sent my proof of purchase. However, I have not received a confirmation yet. That's because I am the one sending the access. So I'm here doing a live video. Of course, I can't do it right now. <laughs> so I will do that later. Na lang. After my live video, I'll check my email. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay, so Anne is asking any tips on how to find a client to social media. So we have an entire different video about this. Uh, I suggest you just go to the pin post on the Facebook page or go to createandriceacademy.com forward slash FAQs with letter S. So there's like a lot of questions there like how to start, how to get clients, how to do freelancing on a mobile phone. Like these are the most common questions that we get. So we just listed it all on a page and you can definitely check that out. And yeah, follow instructions and you can use it to your advantage. Okay, ito na naman ako sa lobat na camera. Hi, just colored. Ayan, ba? <laughs> Nalobot na naman yung camera ko. Sige na lang. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Left that forever. Yay. <laughs> okay. We really were having, I was having a hard time thinking about it. Like, it was, I really did not, to be honest with you, I was the one who was like thinking, I, I don't want to make it a lifetime access because I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it's going to be a sustainable business in the long run if we're going to make it lifetime access, especially that we're paying for the platform. Like Create Norris Academy has its own app, has its own like website platform where you can just like sit down and watch all the videos in one entire website. So we are paying for that every month. And to be honest with you, it's not really uh, cheap. So that is why I was like, oh my God, I, I can't make it left at max for everyone because it's not really going to help a lot of people. And no, not, not what I mean that it's not going to help a lot of people. I mean that it's not really going to help us 
like mentees and of course me as a founder to pay for it every month so I'm not sure where I'm going to get the funds but anyway we were able to sort it out and so that is the reason why we're going to make it lifetime access forever Dang. okay but again um, Create and Rise Academy is starting to have less and less enrollments so unlike last year where we always do enrollments every other month so for example we opened the enrollment January on March we're going to open again so that's not going to be the case in 2020 okay because again um, we have other projects we have other projects just to tease you a little bit we're going to have agency profits Academy so we're going to be opening a different Academy this year and that is why we cannot open uh, create and rise academy again very very soon so if you wish to enroll on april enroll now <laughs> because the next time it's going to open is going to be on september okay alrighty. there's that oh <laughs> uh, leigh is asking so about 20k plus ang enrollment good for one year long <laughs> Yeah, I, we we did discover that, and I somehow felt very bad, no, because they're like saying like, oh, you need to like raise your price, and I'm like, yeah, but like a lot of people need my help, so how am I gonna do this? Right. So there's your solution. Uh, we're going to make it lifetime access forever. Sige. Okay, we have other questions here. Kimi, possible po ba ako matuto at mag-enroll kahit walang laptop at computer? Yes po, we have a mobile app, again, in the academy that you can use. So you can watch the lessons very well at your own convenience without a pressure. There's that. Okay. Tininin, tininin. Jade is asking, I'm doing video editing for more than a year and training still to become a graphic designer. I want to up my rate on this niche. Can I ask how the academy can help me on this niche? So Jade, the niche actually is very different from the skill. So what you are talking about right now is the skill, right? So in the academy, we call that skill of focus. And then the niche is target market, right? So... Um, you have to first identify, in, in the academy, this is how we can actually help you. We help you identify who you want to uh, serve. So we also help you identify, instead of like being a graphic designer and a video editor, we help you decide which of that one really is the one that you're mostly passionate about. So that's in module one, we call that Ikigai. Um, we do that. So we help you understand that it's very important to be a master of one skill, of one skill of focus, and really becoming an expert on that niche instead of trying to acquire like so many skills just to earn money. Because that's what's what the myth is. Like people think that you need to acquire a lot of skills, like buy a lot of courses, SEO, web design, video editing, whatever, email marketing, stuff like that. So I need to have and buy this ton of courses just so I can become a successful freelancer. But that's not really the case. So the, the, the truth is you only need one skill and you become really good at it and you serve the people wholeheartedly, right? Without, without I know, being be very prideful about it. So that's how you can become a successful freelancer is becoming a master of one skill. You can expand your services, of course, later on in the game. But in the beginning, we don't really suggest that you do that right away. Okay, right. So there's that. Ding, ding. What's your best experience in freelancing aside from earning the big money? Ooh, I like this question. <laughs> My best experience in freelancing is being able to do whatever the F, can I curse? <laughs> to do whatever I want. Like literally, it's insane. I cannot even imagine. So back in the day when I was still a teacher I cannot even comb my hair I cannot go to vacations I cannot also like I cannot also buy the things that I want to buy I don't have a lifestyle by the way so wala akong lifestyle wala akong pili hindi naman ako maarte <laughs> but I want to experience ba yung parang 
comfortable lang good na buhay. Lang good. Bisaya. <laughs> yung parang comfortable lang na buhay na I can just sit down and say, Oh, uh, today I want to buy coffee from Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> para ano, para pampalubag loob. Charot. So, yung mga ganun ba? Yung mga little tiny things that I want to accomplish in life. Like, gusto ko lang, gusto ko lang ng, pa, siguro, magandang computer o oh, ganoon diba so i have i also have things gusto ko rin naman ng mga magagandang bagay <laughs> so i want to be able to buy them without any fuss and that's what freelancing was able to endow me imagine nung teacher ako hindi ako makapag ano makapag bakasyon like as in saturday sunday pinapapunta pa kami sa school tapos kailangan pag long weekend for example sem break semester break hindi kami pwede niya na, no? Hindi kami pwede na walang paperwork iwi sa bahay. So, kailangan, on sem break, mayroon kang pile of paperwork. So, hindi talaga siya sem break, di ba? Break daw. <laughs> hindi talaga siya sem break. Ang dami paperwork na kailangan, no? Ipasa ka after the deadline. So, yun yung, yun yung experience ko when I was still employed. And then, freelancing, mm, sarap sa buhay. Wake up at 9 a.m. and then I start working at 1. And then, I stop working at 3 p.m. Tapos, gagawin ko na kagad anong gusto kong gawin after that. So, it's super amazing to just do whatever you want. So, that's one of the things. Like, I really am in it for the freedom. Hindi ko naman gusto talaga nga, no? I, I really don't want to become a millionaire or like, whatever. The money is there. It's just gonna come. I know how to find money. It's not a problem. But what I really want is being able to own my time. Because ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to own my time like because it, it pisses me off like i have to go to school I'm like huh? go to school <laughs> and then uh, at work about 40 to 50 hours in a week so i was never able to own my time ever since i was a kid so it's like mm, i want my freedom okay so that's why i really pursued it there you go how about the answer ni ate oh? <laughs> All right, Zyra is asking, can you give other sample of project-based jobs that is not related to website or graphic design? Um, okay, so, excuse ha, sandali. Nababa burp. Pasuge. So, um, project-based jobs that is not related to website or graphic design, we have copywriting. So, copywriting is when you are writing texts for a website or for a sales funnel, and a lot of that is project-based. So, copywriters earn a lot of money. Like, sometimes they even earn half a million on just one project. Hindi ako magkamali, ha? Half a million on one project. That's how amazing copywriters are. They earn so much. Like, it's insane how much they can charge, especially if they're really good at it. Other one, um, ano pa ba iba? App development. So that's another project-based job that they can ask for. Another high-paying job, by the way. So merong mga ano, merong mga developers, mobile, mobile apps and website developers na humihingi sila ng percento. So for example, if you want them to build a software that you're going to sell later on, for example, let's say, you, you hired a developer to build Grab or Ancas. So whatever is the profit of Ancas and Grab, they get like a certain percentage of it. So imagine, diba? That's a lot of money. So what else? Dami, dami. Even, even for example, um, social media marketing, you can market for one month and use that as a project-based uh, job. So it really is depending on what your price pricing systems are. So that's also what I teach in the academy. So for them to like be able to stretch out and see how how much they can charge for that project or how can they position themselves and see like um batong project based, pwede batong hourly, pwede batong monthly retainer. Like okay, there's that. Mika Zuki is asking, bakit po mas malakas ang freelancing sa mga babae kaysa sa lalaki? Ah, oh, hindi naman. Kasi nga, ano, the very first, this is one of the things that I really struggled with when I was starting graphic design. A lot of graphic designers are men. So, me coming to the field and the industry was a shock to a lot of people kasi nga, babae ako, and then a lot of, um, a lot of people, clients don't really trust women. Diba? Especially men business owners, they don't trust women that much. 
it's a thing. I don't know why, but I don't. <laughs> whatever. I'm not really into that kind of, you know. I don't know. You understand what I mean. <laughs> so I'm not really into that kind of thing. But yeah, it's it's a thing. Uh, I'm not sure if if it's malakas sa babae kasi sa lalaki. But I've observed a lot of people who are men that has really been into the freelancing field. So, kaya nga exactly why ano eh, why I created Create and Rise Academy initially for women. So, it was supposed to be for women. Back when I started last year, 2019, July, I created it for women. And in the video, some of, some of my videos, I say like ladies or girls, you know, like I really thought that it's gonna be for women. But then a lot of people needed my help. A lot of our kuya bros, <laughs> kuya bros, wanted my help in freelancing as well so I just made it open for everyone okay okay let's see Ruth is asking how do you work as a freelancer um I just, you know, the technique, so I may apply this. I just want to know the technique, I guess. To, so, my, so I may apply this too because I worked as an agent in Maxi Care Corp. I want to enhance and develop my communication th skills as well. I hope you answered this question of mine. I'm, how do you work as a freelancer? So, oh, I think mm, this is like the basic question, right? Like how to start or something. I don't know if I understood your question right. But again, we go out there as a self-employed person and we, um, we offer the skills that we are comfortable with. So whatever skill we are comfortable with, if it's writing, graphic design, website design, video editing, we offer that to people who need our help. So that's basically what freelancing is. If you have other questions, I suggest you go to the pin post of the Facebook page. So again, we have there like a ton of instructions on what you can do to start or the basic information on what you can do as a freelancer. Okay, there you go. Mm. Okay, Yan is asking, do you suggest focusing on a particular niche and targeting a particular customer profile? Yes, I would always suggest that because you make more money on specializations. So when I graduated college, I graduated in a very unique degree. It's called early childhood education. So we really specialize on children from kindergarten to third grade. Because that's early childhood. Okay? Get that? <laughs> Gets you back? So again, my degree was early childhood education and we teach kindergarten to third grade. So that's our specialization. And we tend to be more highly in demand, right? We tend to be more highly in demand than the rest of the teachers because we really specialize on kindergarten and we know how to manage children like that, right? So there's that. Um, that's very good because you they know exactly who to call and who to find if they really are looking for that very specific thing. So that is why when I transitioned from graphic designer to a sales funnel designer, I already targeted online entrepreneurs because I know very well for a fact that when I transitioned to a sales, sales funnel design, I know very well that they're going to need me. And that's why I targeted a particular customer profile. That's what we call ideal client avatar inside the academy. And then also another good example is if you're a doctor, if we need anything, right? So if we need anything, if we want to have someone check our ears, nose, and throat, we call an ENT doctor, right? If we want to have our teeth cleaned and stuff, we go to the dentist. If we want someone to operate something inside our living organs, then of course we go to surgeons, right? So there are very different specific special specializations. Same thing with freelancing. It's very easy for people to refer you to other people who needs your service because they know exactly what you do and who you stand for. So that is why you probably, I thought, if you, you, if you hear, for example, if just for example, no. <laughs> so for example, your friend told you, "Kilala mo ba si Demi Bernice?" And then your first your first answer would probably be, "Ah, oh, yung babae na nagano nag 
gumagawa ng video about freelancing. So that's the particular niche, particular customer profile. So people know you exactly and that's how easy it is to build a brand when you are very specific with the niche that you are working on or very specific with the niche that you are targeting. So that's why I would always suggest that. Okay. <clears throat> January is asking, what do we expect after enrolling the academy? What do you expect? You are going to earn skills of a business owner instead of it just simply being a job. You know how Filipinos are so predefined how we Filipinos, hindi to hugas kamay. Filipino So, you know how we Filipinos are so used to predefined paths? Like, oh, mag-elementary ka, mag-high school ka, tapos mag-college ka, tapos mag-apply ka ng trabaho, tapos yun na, successful ka na. Diba? There are, there are uh, plenty of our families that are like that. Like, just say, oh, ito yung dapat mong gawin. And then we go to work, which is another predefined path. Our boss tells us what to do. Oh, this is what you need to submit the next day. This is what you need to do tomorrow. This is what you need to do. You know, yung parang sinasabihin ka palagi kung anong dapat mong gawin. And then here comes building a business where everything is just like, like, hand off to you. It's like, oh, ba, magtatayo ka ng business? Okay, sige, bye. Diba? So that is why it's very important for people to understand business marketing. And yeah, marketing whatever skills and product and service that you can offer to the world because how are you going to stand out and make money if you don't understand marketing? So that's what you can expect after enrolling to the academy. You will understand that marketing is actually a system. My mentees will always say that like, huh? Hindi ko alam na system, my system pala talaga ang freelancing. So that's what we call the Create and Rise Master Plan. So the academy in itself is built together with the formula. And that formula is the Create and Rise Master Plan. So the Academy and the Master Plan. The Master Plan is the formula. The Academy is the, the guide, basically, or the how-to, the system, right? So every, every module is built in a system. Like the, the very first module, may mga diagrams kang aansiran, and everything is logical and everything is a systematized way of learning. Kasi nga, Freelancing is a process. It's just not like, oh, itong gagawin mo, ito, 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 itong gagawin mo, ito, ito. So, I'm not teaching you how to, what to do, not really, but <laughs> I'm not teaching you, like, how to get a job, but I'm teaching you how to become a business person. So, at the end of, like, you being able to finish all the modules in the academy, you're not just going to know how to become a freelancer. You're also going to know how to become a business person because in the future, if you want to um, create your very own business, you would understand marketing even better because what I teach is digital marketing so it applies for any type of business okay ayun 59 na tayo one hour in guys alrighty so we we oh, we still have a lot of questions and I'll try my very best to answer them na lang in the comments so after this live video I'm going to go to the comment section and type my answers okay um, you can definitely be assured with that because I'm not doing anything after this. So I'll be replying to your comments, right? And then next week, Monday, we are going to have another live training. So after this Q&A, next week, we are going to have a, an intensive live training, okay? And again, if you have questions and clarifications, you can always message us on the Facebook page or email us at alpha at and Shem, our very beautiful, amazing, daring <laughs> customer service representative is going to answer your questions. I don't call her customer service representative. I call her happiness lead. So she will definitely ensure that you are happy with the questions or the answers that you're getting. <laughs> That's her job. Okay, right. There you have it. Thank you so much for spending your time with me at this very hour. Maghapunan na po kayo at wag kayong magpagutom. Dapat maghugas ng kamay at wag niyo pong, ano, wag niyo pong, nauubusan talaga ako ng Tagalog. Wag niyo pong, ay, hikapin ang inyong mukha. Charot, sanay, kung ano na, Tagalog. Ano bang Tagalog ng touching? 
Hawakan, the How are you pong hawakan ng inyong mukha? Chat! Uh, ba? Diba? Sige, I will improve my Tagalog over time, guys, so that you will understand me better in my live videos. Okay, there you have it. Thank you so much again for uh, being with me in this live video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!